Hi everyone, my name is Subject36, welcome to the vlog. Today we're going to take a look at the template that I use in Logic Pro X when I start my uh, music sessions. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to be ending up with. Uh, we have an instrument track and we got five different buses and then we're gonna stereo out. I got all the buses selected with a minus 10 send. It's gonna sound like this. And when I click them off. All right, so pretty basic stuff. It's a retro synth I use for this template. Okay, so we're now gonna create this setup from scratch. Okay, let's close this. Start a new project, set up an instrument track, software, which is a retro synth. I don't do any adjustments here. And the first thing I do when I up, open up my mixer here, it's set up my stereo out, my mix bus. Uh, now colors are important. I tend to use the same ones I was taught in a course with uh, Chris Lola LG. So I stuck stuck with that. And then I'm gonna send up, set up my um, effect channel. First thing I do <coughs> is to set up a gain knob. This way I have the possibility to control the gain coming in to the stereo bus, all right? Second, I set up my console emulation, which is the wave and the NLS bus. Usually I set this for the SSL console. If you haven't seen this plugin, it's uh, one from Waves. This is a console emulator emulating an analog mixing desk. So you get the sound of that particular device running your music through it as you would if you did it in real life. There are three different consoles here which are widely known. So the first one, this is an SSL console, SSL 4000, very famous, especially the mix bus from this one is super famous. Uh, the mic one is, uh, it's an MI, EMI console, which is also pretty much used uh, on pop records and rock records. And then we have the, um, the Nevo, named after Yard Nevo, who works a lot with waves. And that's, uh, that's a Neve console. All right. I usually use the SSL version and I crank it up to close to six. After this, I set up my compressor and I do a very simple, simple version of this. This is a mix bus compression setup where I do a studio VCA. This is the standard red compressor, which is uh, widely used on, on a lot of stuff, but as a mix bus from compressor, maybe not that much. But I set it up pretty softly, pretty, pretty gently. So the th threshold is something I have to dial in a little bit later when I have more channels running through it and actually do mixing, but the ratio I leave at the two to one. Uh, makeup gain, no. I do auto gain off. I do pretty fast attack around 10 milliseconds. I do an auto release, which is, is is at at the moment. So this is fine to me. Let's leave it at that. After this, I finish up with tape emulation and I have the Waves J37. There are different tape emulators out there. I think there even are some free ones these days. I just use the factory setting on this one for either mastering uh, smoothing round bottom or fat, tight and open. That tight and open, let's use this one. All right, and I don't do any limiting on this at the end. Thereby I keep the levels throughout my creative sessions in a place where I don't distort uh, the master bus, which makes the mixing phase a lot easier later on. So that was the mix bus set up, all right. Then I'll set up the sends. So let's go back to the instrument. Let's just name this as well. Uh, so, all right. Mm, 
and to do sense in logic, the easiest way is just to set it, send it to a bot that doesn't exist and the logic will create it for you on the fly. I usually set up the colors immediately to be able to, well, sorry, uh, to be able to to distinguish all the tracks properly and I name it. This we're gonna start with is slap. I make sure it's a stereo bus and then I set my delay, tape delay for the slap. And here I don't do the sync. I actually type in and I use the 166 millisecond John Lennon slap. I do a little bit of a high cutting here down to 10,000, 9,000 depending upon how much stuff I will run through it as well. Wet I run all the way to, up to the top 100% since this is a sense channel it makes sense to have it fully up. And the feedback I take up maybe to 20%, 20 to 30% somewhere around there. Let's see here what this sounds like now. I send minus 10 into it and it sounds like this. Slap is usually just a quick delay to, to enhance and enlarge the sound just slightly. All right, the next bus I'm gonna set up is my plate delay, all right? Plate, usually I work with if I want to do some harsh keys, etc. Especially when I, when, when I have pianos and stuff like that. Let's set up the color, make sure it's the same one as the others. There we go. And just name it Plate. Here I want to use also uh, built-in uh, reverb and I use the silver reverb. This is a very simple one to use. Few knobs to dial in and um, you get the results immediately. So I like a very long pre-delay on my... Usually I set it between 150 and 200 which is a lot. Uh, let's go with 160 at this time. And reflectivity, I want to keep it at 30 somewhere. Size, 70, mm. and yeah, that's kind of cool. Low cut, high cut, let's take the high cut up at just a notch, just about 8,000 maybe. And then wet all the way up. <laughs> There, kind of a little bit metallic -y, not that long reverb, but it does enlarge the sound, all right? Since I do the low cut, I don't have any bass buildups in the low frequencies as well, so this is quite important. Uh, I can have a little bit lower low cut, around 180 hertz, for example. Then I have to watch myself so I don't get very low and heavy when I do the mixing. All right. Let's set up a large reverb as well. So sometimes you want to do, sometimes you want to send something to infinity and beyond, right? Uh, and I usually call this reverb hall or reverb large or something like that and my favorite plugin to do this uh, with is the replica coming from native instrument this is a very nice reverb delay plugin which is there we go i use use the wormhole setting and then i actually do a little bit of eqing here i roll off all the way up to come on all the way up to like just above 500 at least 
There we go. And now you hear this is a very long reverb tail. This goes on forever and ever. Uh, I will actually roll off a little bit of the highs as well here. So we don't build up too much harshness. There we go. Okay. After this, let's set up a crusher. Usually I use this uh, for drums. I can use this. Sometimes I set up a different one for drums for the classic New York New York compression. But I use usually do this use this for uh, synths that needs a little bit more extra uh, in your face, so to say. Crusher, all right. And here, very simple compression tool, and I can use a preset even compressor tools. And here I have something called the VCA Smashed. I think this is a good one. It's got no auto gain. It's got a lot of makeup. Ratio of five to six, uh, five six to one. Uh, very quick attack, auto release, and then I have a threshold of minus forty decibels here, which will basically crush all sound that I send through it. And you just immediately hear that this is this just comes up in my face right now. And when I do soft, it's still in my face. So let's back that up a little bit. All right, last bus to set up is the delay. And I call it a quarter delay, like this. You could actually almost call it, um, you could almost call it an um, eighth note delay. I use the one fourth dotted as a template to start to start off with usually, which is quite slow. You hear it now. I have a tempo on this track of 120. And then I start dialing this down usually. And this depends upon the tempo of the song usually. But let's set up a template here, which is. 350, 360, all right, which is one fourth triplet, one eighth dotted here. I use a straight channel. I take the high cut a little bit higher on both sides. Take the feedback up a little bit, 40% maybe. No cross feed. Now you hear how it opens up quite a lot. If you really want to open it up, you can do some crossfeed. Let's take some crossfeed here, like 30%. Okay, so it's a very subtle difference. But I usually leave it with no crossfeed at all. So let's hear what this sounds like now. Now we have the full template up and running we have five different um, five different send channels to work with and usually what I do is that I leave my sends for the individual sounds like that Crusher, I can bring the sound very close. All right.
So basically this is my template that I use for starting all my projects. Now I have a, I have a mix bus set up, I have my I have my send buses, so I have some effects to start with. Uh, two different reverbs, slap delay, quarter delay, and uh, crusher. Obviously, doing electronic music, I will work with a lot of more effects than this. Uh, so, so I will start stacking them up where as I go. But that's always very song dependent, obviously. So now I'm going to save this, and this is how you do that. Save as template. And then I have a here, catalog S36 synth set up two, call it that. Here we go. Template is saved. I can now close the project. Don't save. And I can say new from template. This is how I use it. And here you have a catalog called my templates. Usually you just have this when you start and then it's the logic's own templates but if you go to my templates or you can open an existing project there here we go simple synth setup synth setup 2 that was the one we use now choose it and it opens up here we go just start making music all right hope you like that if you want more content like this Please subscribe and uh, you get notified when I post new stuff up. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. See you soon.